Hello and welcome to Google Sites Training. Uh, my name is Carl Manganero and I'm going to walk you through how to make up a Google Site for your classroom and then possibly how to use it for assessment purposes as well, especially if you're a school that's going remote or doing a hybrid model. So the first thing you'll need to do is when you go into your Google Sites, into your Google Suite, um, you go up to the little waffle and you'll find Google Sites up there. Click on that and it should open you to this page. There is a possibility that you might open to the old Google Sites. There will be a little button on, on the left hand side, a little text that says uh, new Google Sites. Click on that and you'll get to this page. Um, they recently just added a template gallery. Uh, so that was something new. Um, it should be on everybody's. If you don't have it, don't worry, it will be. Um, this is something for beginners if you need a little help on setting up your uh, website. So you can go into any one of these or by clicking template gallery and it gives you a bunch of different ones, especially for um, education as well. So you have class, club, and student portfolio, which is one of the things we will cover. Now, while these are nice and it sets uh, up for you a little bit, um, I stay away from them because you're kind of stuck to use theirs. Um, it, you want to build a Google site that fits you. These don't fit you. They're not made for you, but they are a good start. Um, you can always start with one of these and then slowly start deleting things you got from here. Um, especially if it's a color issue, they do start with a certain theme. And I can show you how you can change that theme to make the Google site more just for you. So if you do want to start a website, first thing you're going to do is you will start from, if you're going to start from scratch, you start with a blank page. So just by clicking on this blank page, it will start up a website for you um, that you can fill out. Now you can see they are all hosted in your site, so also be in your drive. And in here you see the, some of the ones that I've created. <clears throat> I mean, you can create ones from student. This is a template I took out of here. Uh, I just gave a Google Sites course. So some of the people who just took that course that we offered um, just finished today, uh, I took all their sites out. And in each one, I put in a site, their site, the website, the parent communication side, the assessment side. So people can go who took this course and see what everybody else did in the course. Being that it was a two-week online course, you know, you don't get to see other people and what they do. So I make sure, you know, all right, you finished yours. We gave you grades on it and told you how to fix it. But here are some other ones and so you can get some more ideas. All right, so we want to go in and create a site. Now, you want this site to fit the age that you're doing it for. Uh, you want this site to maybe show your personality. Um, your class, what you're teaching. So there are a lot of good things you can get out of this. Um, I have to tell you, if you're going to take stuff from Google Images, things like that, um, just be careful with the copyright issue. Um, you are more than welcome to put in pictures of yourself, of uh, things from your house or, you know, whatever you want or from your classroom. That's more than fine. So what we're going to do is start from scratch and build up a website. Um, I'll just give you a couple of examples of some sites that I've done um, through the RIC. So what you want to do is you're going to build a site that looks like this. And you can take a Google site and really, which is, is it does have limits on some of the things you can do, but you can make a site that People, if they look at it, don't realize it's a Google site. Obviously, on this end, you can. But if I was to go and preview this, it's like I'm going to any website using Wix, WordPress, you know, whatever they have out there. And from here, I can click on things and go to certain things that I want to do. Um, does your site have to look like this? No. But this is something that you can do with Google Sites. It's... Although it's limited, it can look very nice, and it's very user-friendly, and you'll see that. So let's get into seeing how a website 
can be built. I have a couple of videos I already did um, before the summer on Google Sites. We can send out links to that so you can watch more. Um, I have a website that went over how to build a Google site, like the step-by-step, -step, then how to use it as a parent communication. Then I did one as also a video on making assessments from Google Sites. So I will show you how to do a few things. I won't be able to get into everything because this is a 30-minute video and I want to get through as much stuff as I can in regards to building your website and also um, doing portfolios for it and assessments. So we start off with a blank slate. Now, you obviously want to give it a name, so we'll start it off right away by calling it Social Studies 9 or whatever you want to call it, ELA 1, Math, whatever the subject you have. And it'll automatically pop up here as well. Now, the first thing you can do if you want is to go in here and to see what this is all about. And with the navigation, uh, you can have it right here on top. Or you can choose the side, and it'll be right down here. Whatever your preference is, you can do with that. For the color, it could be transparent. So whatever's behind it is behind it. Or you can come in and make it white or you can make it black. And you notice the text will change on its own. And you'll notice that during the site when you do change your background to a darker color, it will adjust with the text. And you'll see that in a little bit. Some of these other features you won't get into just yet. Um, you can add a logo at some point and a favicon, which is this little thing right up here. Okay, that's all it really is. Um, if so, if you don't want this by default will be the Google Sites favicon, but if you put your own in there, that'll show up when your site goes public. The announcement banner we'll get into in a little bit as well. So the first thing that I usually do is when I get in, I want to pick my theme. So I go over to the themes, and I, right now by default is on the first one. It's simple. It's a blue color and it's on light font you can't put your own fonts in here each theme has its own font but you can't change it or add it uh, you can make it light classic or heavy or bold you can change the color though so if you want to go in and you say reds now your color or whatever color you really want that becomes your color and that's important to know because Instead of having a page of where it's just white all the way down, you might want to break it up with color. So, for example, if I put a text box in here and then I have another text box right below it, I may want to separate them. So I want to add that. So there's my yellow strip for that that I can have. So, And you can only have one color by default. <clears throat> there is a trick, and I'll show you that in a little bit of how you can add multiple colors to your site. All right, also images, very simple to do. By just clicking on the image, you're allowed to add that. Before we get into images though, here's the text. You have five choices, normal text, title, which is the biggest, header, subheading, and you have small, um, whatever you want in there. So if I was to say, if we'll just use this for example. We'll take this one and drag it down. This is a title page. Kind of big, stands out. You don't have a lot in there. If you want it a little bit smaller, you can make it a header page. So that's the choices you have. If you have a lot of text, if you're writing a paragraph, you're better off just probably with a normal or subheading. Another thing you can do with the text is you can always make it smaller, the box, and move it around. So now you have room in here for something else. What else could I put in there? You go, you upload, and I'll take this one here. It comes in. There's my image. I can adjust the size. Take it and put it right there. If I think that's too long, I can try to make it even smaller so it matches up. All right, so that's a little, some of the things you could do inside of a box with text and with pictures. You can also have full pictures. Again, we'll get into all that as well. Your next thing you have down here might just be 
you know, saying your name. My name is. If I want to put that in the center, I just align it there. If I want to add bullets, you know, all that stuff, I can even add a link to it, but we'll get into that as well. I can bold it. So it comes out a little bit um, more noticeable. Or I can just change it to a subheader and it makes it bigger. I can change it to a header. All right, so people can see it better. So those are some of the things you can do with text. Um, another way to just do text is really simple. You just click inside of a box here and it opens up this. It's kind of, a, it's this right here, but now it's here. So really nothing too big. Um, the one thing you can do from here that is not here is upload. Like here, you can, well, you can, you can do the same with an image, but you can also upload right from here as well. And it goes right to your computer. Okay. Where if you upload from the images, it'll give you a choice. So that maybe that might be a little quicker, save you a second or so. All right. So now I can get into layouts. Now with layouts, you have the option here where you can put your picture, name, and description about you. If you're talking about, you know, introducing yourself to your kids. If you're doing like a subject or like different classes that you teach and you teach two classes, you put it right here. You find a picture that fits, you know, what, you're, what you teach, name, the name of the course, and a description down below. If you have multiple courses, you put something like this in. So a lot of different options you can do. And the nice thing is if you go in and get a picture from here, it will put it in there and it will fit it in there. So if I was to go in and look for a Google search and I went for, let's say it's um, math class I'm looking for, take this image and now it puts it in there. And I do the same thing here. I go in, select image. I want math again. Maybe a different picture. And I take this and I put it in there. And then you just give it a title. Okay, if you want to link it to a certain page, that's something you can do. Uh, that gets a little more. We're starting off kind of simple right now. So right now I got a mess on my page, so I'll clean it up a little bit. Maybe things I don't need. Right now, if I take this page title, I want it to come back to be my big page title. I can do it right in here, make it bigger, make it a title, and then center it. And now it's back to being my title page again. This image here, I can get rid of if I don't want it anymore. Okay, and so basically you kind of, and the nice thing is nobody will see this site until you publish it. So that's a nice thing. You make a mistake, eh, fix it, go back. Your best friend sometimes is right up here called undo last action. All right, so next thing we're going to look at is some of these things we have down here. Um, image carousel basically will make you a, it's almost like a slider you see on websites where it just keeps putting videos in and they slide, the next one comes in. Um, you can put those in there as well for your site. Um, down here we have all of, oh, the button is one I use a lot. Um, I don't like having too many pages up here in the menu because if you start building, making more pages, you're gonna have it all the way full, then there's gonna be a more button, you gotta click, then it drops down. So I like to hide them, and I can show you how to do that. And I'll put a button in. And with the button, I just say, you know, say I have another one that's called um, Math Problems. And I link it to one of the pages that I've already created. I can click that on. I can't click on it right now because I haven't made a page yet. I can't even do it. I could do it to this one here just for now and I can link it to that and then here's my button and with a button you can put it anywhere you want you can put it right here attach it to that I can attach it to right here you see how it takes the form if this is a big box if I was to make this box smaller that goes with it or I can just put it on its own so this can adjust to whatever I want it to. See, and that's how it works with that. So a lot of different things you can do with buttons. And buttons is, is a way that people know there are more pages. 
Um, a lot of times I use icons or images. I put in there, I link them, uh, but the button works just as good. And, you know, it's a lot easier to do, trust me, than, than the icons. Sometimes it, icons will take a lot of work and trying to get it the right size and everything. So that is a little more difficult. The next thing I'm going to show you are Google Apps. Now, you're going to like these because you can put, you don't have to do things double. If you've already done something, got a video on YouTube or got a Word doc or a slide, it's so easy just to put it right on here. There's one little trick that a lot of people don't do. Um, not really even a, a trick. It's just something, a step that you have to do in order for other people to be able to see that slide. And I'll show you that when we do it. So say, for instance, I want to put a YouTube video in, and we are talking about math problems. I get to a video. I type in, maybe I might know what the video is and where it is. I'll select it, and the video pops up right in there, ready for the kids to watch. You can adjust it, bigger or smaller. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you don't like the black things, you just keep it on there. If you want to make it bigger so they see it, you can do it that way as well. Put it in the middle, whatever you want to do. All right, so that's how you add a YouTube video. That's very simple to do. Um, a calendar. When you open it up, it's going to go to your calendars. So you just take your calendar, click on it, insert it, and there's your calendar. Kids can see all the different things they have to do. If you have a Google calendar, put it right in here, and they see all their assignments. And you don't have to go into this to update it. It will update it when you update it in your calendar or in Google Classroom. So it's nice. Nice to have, um, for, and especially for parents to see, again, when assignments are due. Uh, next, you have a Google Map. So anytime you want to know where you are, you can put it right in here. Hit select. The Google Map comes in. It picks Rome. Um, if you want it next to it, you put it right here, and now they're side by side. If you're me, they got a match because that's how I am. Um, so now you have them back here, and they both match. Uh, this is nice for other assignments that you could do, but we'll get into that when we get into the uh, assessment part. Anytime you want to post one of your Google Docs, you just go right into here, put it in. Now... Now, for this, I would probably make it a little bit smaller. I can put it right in here. And when I update the Google Doc with today, today is day two, when I update it in the Doc, it'll update on here. So, again, saves you doing that double time thing you, that you have to do. Um, now, the only problem is you have to make sure in that Google Doc that you have it as a shareable link. If you're only going to share it with your students, then that link just needs to be everybody can see it um, or can view it in your domain, in your school domain. Um, if you want parents to see it, you're going to have to make it um, shareable to everybody. Even though you shared your site to the public, that doesn't matter. They can see the site, but when they get to this little box, it's going to say, uh, request access, can't see it, okay, um, and, th you know, then that makes, the parents are going to be emailing you saying, how come I can't see this document, or how come I can't see this slide, and it's the same thing for Google Slides. I go into any slide that I've done, put that in there, and there's the Google Slide. Again, share it. You can actually even auto-start it. So as soon as they get to it, it starts playing, and you can loop it and start that all off if you wanted to. And that can go right in here as well. So you have everything nice and organized. Of course, I have to move it down, and now we're set up. So I just embedded five things in there in a matter of less than a minute. Um, it would have been less, but I kept talking. Uh, and this could be a web site that your kids and parents could use could have all your information right there now what you could then do is say okay now see i like i want to break them up a little bit so i'll put that yellow um and say like yellow is the only color i have and i want 
something different. Um, maybe black. If you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, you'll want that. So what you need to do for that sometimes is you need to go in and either in PowerPoint or Word, take a box and put that color in the box, then do a screenshot or a snippet of that box. And now you can just actually take that as an image, and I'll show you what you can do. I have one here. It's not black, though, but it's I believe it's gold. I click on that as an image. Now I have a gold background. So if that's all you have is a gold, so you notice how it does change it for um, readability. You can always go in and just unclick that, and it brings it back to your original color. And if some reason I'm like, okay, you know what? I do want my Pittsburgh Steeler colors. I'll just go here, and now I do have the black and gold. Or if, And there's also another uh, gray is another option you have as well. So you have plain white background, gray, your design, your theme, and then whatever other color you want. As long as you take a picture of it as that color, it'll come up as that color. All right, so that's pretty much um, the insert part of the things you can do between the text box, the layouts, and all the other buttons you have here. Um, there are some other tricks, and I do have them in the other videos, so if you want to watch those, um, they are located on morrick.org slash video where you can go and see some more things on that. The last thing I'm going to go over as far as the website are pages, and I'll just do real quick. I want a new page. I put in here, and it's going to be, um, we'll just call it Math Problems, and there's my new page. And again, then I have to adjust it, and to see how it's up here, if you want it up here and you know you're not going to have a lot of pages, that's fine. But if you are going to have a lot of sub-pages and pages, you might want to hide it. So you do have a choice here to um, add, to hide this in navigation. And once I do that, now it's not there anymore. But you better make sure you link it on the front page or no one's ever going to find it. And you can add as many pages as you want. That's the beauty of it. Um, if you want a sub page that's going to be underneath there, you would hit add sub page. That page will open up right under here and you go from there. All right. So before we get into the assessment part, there is one thing um, I do want to show you, and that's when you publish the site. And then all of a sudden, nobody can see it. So if I want to go into the site and hit publish, I will go in here and I'll give it a name. This is going to be what the first part of it is, and there's really not much you can do about it. You can get a domain, but we won't get into that. So I'm going to make this, and if you go something simple, that's usually the best. I want to do math because nobody in my district has made a math page. If, they're, if it's taken, it'll tell you, and then you can go to you know, math work. It's all got to be one word. All right, so I publish it. So I published it, doesn't mean anything. Right now, I own, I'm the only one who can see it. So I want to go into here, and it gives me a couple options. I can share with anybody I want. So if I want to share it with another teacher, and what I'm sharing with them is the site and how to edit the site. Down here where it varies, this is what I want to get into. The draft, you don't want the, you pretty much want to restrict the draft to yourself. Unless there's somebody who's going to be working with you, keep it to yourself. You don't want to have that anybody with the link have your draft because then they can go in and change it. If you're doing it with students and it's what you are planning on doing and you want them to go into it, that's different. But, but for the public to see it, right now this site can only be seen by people in the Rome City School District. So that's like anybody in your school district. To make everybody see it, I have to go public with it. Once I go public and I send out the link, people then could go to that site and view it. So if you're going to make a site that's for your students only, you can keep it in the domain. If you're going to make it for the parents, then you're going to have to make it public. And also remember, every Google app that you also put in is also going to have to be made shareable or they will not be able to see it. And what's going to happen is they're going to keep clicking on it to ask for 
to request access and your email inbox is going to get bigger and bigger with the same email. So save yourself the trouble the first time. Um, and you won't notice it because you can see it because it's yours. So what I do a lot of times just to make sure I have things all shareable, I'll sign out of that of my domain, go to the, the actual site and see what I can get into and what I can't get into. All right, so that's how to make a Google site very quickly. Um, I do, as again, I have other videos that go a little bit slower and show you some of the things step by step, but that's pretty much a way to set up your Google sites. Um, once you have one, um, it's very easy to maintain. Uh, you can do it once a week. You can just make it a static one where here's the information and I'm not going to add anything else the rest of the year, but here's all the contact information. Or you can do it weekly and some people will do it daily. But it's a nice twist because Google Classroom is what a lot of people use. And that's you can still use Google Classroom, but a lot of people want, you know, this kind of breaks it up a little bit. with a little, And you can add pictures and colors and it makes it just a little bit easier on the eyes for the kids, especially if they've been going into Google Classroom quite a bit. Um, so an example of an actual site that we use for training is this one here. And just to show you real quickly some of the things that we have on there, we have the picture that they wanted. Here's a, a Google form for if you want parents' emails. Um, your syllabus can go right here, your course description, your Google Classroom assignments. There's that daily announcement thing. Another form, a calendar. There's a slide. You got the image carousel, so it'll go through a couple pictures. It can be small or it can be both. You can put in a video. And here's a little feature that you'll find on the parent communication one. Um, it's a little ticker that you can do using Google Slides. If you get a chance to look at it on one of the other videos, it's actually a nice thing to have. You can keep having a ticker at the bottom of your screen. So this is the site. And again, um, make the site reflect you and how you want it and you'll be fine the only thing for me that is really important is that it's consistent um things are kind of aligned it doesn't have to be exactly like i align it but you want to make sure things are aligned so it looks good and easy on the eyes all right all right so first thing i want to show you is a right an example of a writing portfolio uh, done by a former colleague of mine, um, Heather Lanfair, who teaches in Richfield Springs. And she did this with her college now college writing course and basically set them up to do their portfolio uh, using Google Sites. And the kids jumped on it right away and they really enjoyed the creativity of it. I've known a lot of people who are starting to have them, kids do research papers and then for the final thing is to turn that research paper into a Google site um, to give it vision and give it, you know, like let people see more than just the words. So some teachers have used it as an alternative to a research paper. Some teachers are using it as a last step, the final thing for the uh, research paper, but it is available for you here. And I'll just give you a couple of examples of some of the kids who did it. And this is, and she even was clear with this twice, one of the drawbacks of doing it this way is it's out there for people to see. Um, so, but they all agreed to it and put it out there. And some of these kids came up with really nice sites. So this first one, how she had it set up is they basically had to do their introduction. They had to do an about me page and where they live and where they have lived. So this first page pretty much is more of a biography of the student who is doing the portfolio. Then they had to make another page, and here was where they had to put all of their portfolios in, informational essay, literary, poetry. So they would take them, and they would embed them using Google Docs right into here. So nothing fancy. They put it in. They put all their different... Um, all their information in. They had a take a break essay where they had to do the same thing. Where they can write about anything they really a prompt that they had. Um, 
where and their prompt was there are two kinds of people in the world and that's what they had to write on and then they also had a class reflection at the end using google sites where they did it they could do it using a video so this was one way of use of getting assessments out of your kids using google sites um right now in this time where it's hard to assess kids because they're either not in school or they're only in school a couple days you know it's how do you give a kid a multiple choice test when they're all at home all they got to do is text their friends this is one way where they actually have to put it in and do the work so um this is the portfolio that that she did for her class and found it to be very very successful so besides a portfolio another thing you could do using google sites is say you're at the end of a unit and you want to make sure the students have a good understanding of what you just covered um so you just covered a certain topic and you want them to at least know a person or an event that took place during that time so you assign them a, a project on google sites so so maybe you can assign each kid um you know one of the articles where they have to make a website page explaining those articles that they they were chosen um give pictures of and explanations to why they did it in the first place and maybe even more modern day pictures of it being used and being in play today just to kind of get an understanding you can use the bill of rights um all 26 amendments you can use if you want to just if you don't want to use the first 10 use all of them give each kid the amendment they make a website showing that amendment then they have to present it or share it with the class if you're in science whatever topic you're talking about you give each kid a different uh term that you use that you want them to know so you can do it that way as well um so i think my two favorite ones would be the portfolio part and the one i just explained where they can build their own websites based on that historical time period i mean the, if you wanted to do that that kid could use that same site for all the different things he did for the course of the year and by the time you're done he's got a little review sheet on that topic if you want it to be a little bit more general where okay you know unit one we're covering this is the constitution so his first page is on the constitution his second page will cover you know the 1800s to 18 to manifest destiny so he has that in there you know and then all the different time periods and sections that are in there he can use that for a great review as well at the end of the year and again ela science uh, math can even do the same thing as well i've seen math teachers use um, google sites as well so if you have any questions on um, google sites uh, you can always email me at cmanganero at morg.org um, and i can walk you through we'll probably be doing some more courses on google sites we just did one with like 30 40 people in it and it went pretty well so we might put that back on the table again um, once school starts and we get going again but having your own website is great because it does open the door between you and the parents it's less emails you might get from them because everything you do is right out there um, the key though is if you are going to start out may, making updates all the time you might want to keep that consistent because they're going to start expecting it and when after a couple weeks go by and you haven't done anything you know you might get those emails so uh, try to start out and try to keep the same thing if you know you want to use it a lot then update it when you you know when you always do if it's something you might want to update every couple of weeks start that way so the parents know and also if it's just going to be a static site with really no new information going on just here's all the contact that's fine as well and then you just you know you put it up there and there's no old news or old information on there so again, if you do have any questions, I gave you my email. Um, enjoy the last few days of your summer.